that did, did have the strap, he was crying. Me and my other homeboy were there, my other homeboy had his baby on the way. So me being home, we went this gang banging life. I see my homeboy crying, that was guilty of what we were getting caught up for. So I went in ahead and I took the rap because I didn't want him to be the first one from my neighborhood to go to the penitentiary, knowing he'd make our neighborhood look weak. So I went ahead and I said, everything's fine, whatever, I got a drug addiction, blah, blah, blah. I ended up going to the penitentiary, I think I was 18, 19 years old. I was very hungry in this lifestyle. But since I was the first one from my neighborhood to hit the penitentiary, I had no homies there, just enemies. So as soon as I hit the fish tank, we had 21 days before you lock down your little meds, your psych evaluation, et cetera, et cetera. So when I was doing that, I was crossing the yard. We had a, a regular clothes, so of course I got some 38s and a big t-shirt creased down, because that's how we dress, hair net, you know what I mean? So I was representing what I was, but when I was coming across the yard, a whole bunch of haters were, you know, mimicking or whatever, right? When you get out, we're gonna get at you. So I said, that's cool. So as I was in the fish tank, of course my heart was like, Bruh. You know what I mean? First time in the joint, okay, this dude's gonna try to kill me, whatever. I'm gonna try to make a name for myself. So I made me an ice pick, you know, because I didn't know about knives and whatnot. Long story short, when I hit the yard, I plugged somebody the first day on the yard. And then I started moving up in the uh, penitentiary ranks. So I did my time, I ended up a max custody, expired my sentence. So, so I was real proud of what I did, I look forward to prison life as a gang member. I hit the streets, so I was well recognized. It didn't take me long. As soon as I uh, hit the gate, I stole the car. We did some smash and bashes. We got a bunch of guns. Literally within a year, I shot a few people and I stabbed somebody else. Headed back to the joint. Went back to the joint. I was hungry. I was supposed to do three years as a weak case. I ended up doing over a decade because I had numerous stabbings in the penitentiary. Ended up with uh, five years in the hole, then I picked up an extra year for it. We're getting down with the guards or whatnot. My little cousin Smiley hit the joint at 15. Being a bad influence I was, I had him a knife and said, you riding with the homie? He said, yeah, he stabbed somebody caught 10 years. Then my little cousin Angel hit 15. Same thing, he kept pushing the knives and kept stabbing people. Now we're all part of our sentence. I had like six little cousins in there doing life sentences. You know what I mean? I got out the joint, st still hungry. I hit the street, hustling, whatnot. I was out like nine years. Oh, no, 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 when I got out, I went right back, then I got out again, then I, then I did like nine years on the street, but I was serving the devil 100%, I ain't gonna lie. I had, I had no uh, intentions to serve God. The one that they did, so I'm on the streets, and what I said, the third time I got out of prison, the only time I'm coming back to the joint, they're gonna have to shoot me down and drag me back. Plain and simple, I ain't coming back. I got an altercation May 13, 2010. 73 cops on the scene, two helicopters. They lit me up four times in the 1911 Kimber Tactical 45 hollow tip. They shot me in both arms. This leg, I was still going. When they blew out my Achilles, they dropped me. I went back to the penitentiary hopping, literally. So I seen all my homies, because I know everybody in there, but the penitentiary that I knew that I was on top of the, the scale calling shots and whatnot the third time just by prison stabbings. That car was broken into like three different cars. Everybody getting at each other. So everything I built fell apart. Now everybody's at each other on some weird ass politics, or a weird politics. And then, uh, and so when I, so when I hit the streets, after I did my time, they sent me straight to Max. I hit the streets to check on my neighborhood and everybody's strung out, literally. Fighting each other for 20 sacks. My one homeboy stabbed my other homeboy because he's tweaked out over nothing, just paranoia, punctured his lung. And, and so I seen all that, it would change me when a 17-year-old guy killed my little homie. When I looked in his casket, I said, that's it. And that's why I'm doing this today. When I looked in his casket, I literally, I stopped selling drugs, stopped gang banging, and tried to reunite the human race. The human race, everybody, because we're all one under God. And let me tell you, that life of gang banging, it ain't nothing but misery. The drugs, nothing but misery, because everybody's telling you you will go to prison. And there's no loyalty when you're serving the devil. Because you're either serving the devil or you're serving God. There is no in betweens. I've been on top of the gangster world in the penitentiary, big time shot caller, but at the end, I wasn't caught nothing but some little cells. You know what I mean? The key thing in the strongest man is not to break the law and serve God, because at the end of the day, 
When you die, you're going to heaven or hell. Everlasting life, living in glory and bliss, or you're going to be in hell suffering. Right now, I got a, a brother that's, uh, he's in the hospital paralyzed from the chest down. Then this, uh, this is my little homie, he got shot in the neck before, survived that. Got shot four other times, survived that. He was on a four-wheeler. Brakes locked up, flew off the four-wheeler, he's paralyzed from the chest down. This other young man I met two weeks ago at this other gang intervention class I talked at. We invited to him a spiritual barbecue. Because I, I seen his eyes, I go, look, brother, this ain't your life, homie. You, you, I can see your eyes went with that, that life. Why don't you come to the spiritual barbecue to embrace God and you'll have a good life. He didn't show up to the barbecue. I think like three, four days ago, he got shot in the chest right there by a uh, serious and Eastern fighting for his life. That this lifestyle, it, 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 it's, not, it's not a joke. And my other friend, John, who got shot in the head, he's paralyzed from the waist down, but can only move one arm. See, people say it's life or death or prison. That's not true. You can be handicapped in a living hell, not being able to create what you're doing. But if you are in a wheelchair, you've got the opportunity to go to heaven and everlasting life if you serve God. To the best of your ability, embrace God and read the Bible. That's the best rules and the best life I can lead you to. I wasted decades of my life in the penitentiary. Fourth time I went back, I see both my sons there, my nephews, we're all in prison together. My sons grew up looking up to me, they can't stay out the penitentiary now. You know what I mean? I probably was a bad influence, I caused a lot of that. But they went that life with their drug addicts and they were shooting stab any quick for a little bit of money. Because the devil got them like this, shaking them up. They don't know it, but I pray for everybody here and I reach out to anybody I can, because maybe somebody can find me and reach out to my kids and say, because I can. I can just give you what I went through, and let me tell you, it's nothing but death. I can count easily 40 of my homeboys that are dead, younger than me, that are all buried. So I like everybody to do me one favor. Everybody bow your hands up and say a prayer for it. Tommy. He's paralyzed from the chest down. And, and, and uh, I pray for healing of Tommy. From the bottom of his feet to the top of his head. He's a good man that changed his life and was striving to serve God by his little accident. I pray that you heal his whole body in Jesus' name, because with God, everything and anything is possible. I pray to the breath of life that flows through his body, heals every little part of his body. As the breath, as the blood of the blood of Jesus flows through his heart, through his whole body, I pray you heal his whole body. And let him walk and dance and praise God and come out here and outreach. Because I was a bad influence on his son's man's life, and I'm trying to be a good influence. In Jesus' name, amen. I thank you for the prayers. So I'm going to go see him at the hospital today at 7. I go every single day. And then this dude, I mean, he looked up to me and, man, it is sad. He finally got his life straight and now he's paralyzed. I don't know how much time I got, but I keep talking. I ain't got no why. I got to work literally. But look, all you guys, whatever you want to accomplish in life, trust me, right now is the crossroads. Do it. Callers, doctors, lawyers. It's simple. Whatever you. Energy you put into the bad life, put it in the good life. And you can be anything you want. I embrace so much time in this uh, life of negativity. I really got nothing out of it, you know what I mean? Really nothing. But now I do because I got God, but I lost a lot of homeboys. And uh, well, what does anybody want to do here? What, what goals you got? Anybody? A musician. You could be a musician, you could take music lessons. You can take uh, whatever instruments you want to play. What do you do? Do you sing? And you can rap. I used to rap too. I have Bluetooth. I had a music studio when I got out. I got it for my homeboy Bam Bam, but he couldn't get off the dope, so we couldn't take it nowhere. But yeah, it ain't simple. Pro Tools, you can do a music studio right in, right in the house. It ain't hard. Any other boys are here? Nobody? Stay free, stay alive. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and end this, and then God bless you all, I appreciate you listening to me.